The beautiful uh, our visitor coming from west, west or western. We say uh, western, western, western Macedonia. Macedonia. <laughs> yeah, and it is a relatively young university when he works in computer science. And uh, Dr. Darcy Gaines uh, is interested in uh, uh, high performance architecture. Yeah and in methods of uh, improving uh, the performance. And uh, today he will uh, talk to us about uh, new, what is new in OpenCL. Thank you for your introduction. I'm coming from Greece, from a university that was uh, uh, established in the 2005. So we are 10 years or something uh, uh, about uh, this. We are a very small university. Uh, the faculty of all the university, of the six departments of the university, is uh, si 16 people, six zero people. Uh, in my department, Department of Informatics and Telecommunication Engineering, we are seven professors, seven faculty. Personally, I'm a, a lecturer at this university and uh, I have been teaching various issues on high performance computing and embedded systems from 2010. Um, in uh, this uh, visit, which, which uh, is, uh, is funded from the Erasmus Plus program, uh, I will discuss some things about the OpenCL. First of all, why we need OpenCL, what is OpenCL, and uh, I have uh, uh, sampled some recent research works on OpenCL to give you some ideas of where OpenCL is used. First of all, we can say that we live in heterogeneous world. Heterogeneous uh, is uh, something that consists of many different things. And heterogeneous uh, comes from the Greek word heterogenia. So uh, in this uh, world, on, of the heterogeneous computing that we live in, we see that uh, there are uh, CPUs, D, uh, GPUs, G graphics processor units, uh, DSP processors, accelerators that speed up the processing and computation of data, and uh, other things. We, as a computer scientist on high performance computing, we have to make use the best of uh, our resources. So, if we have a, a, a server with uh, some GPUs, we also have to work on these GPUs to uh, extend the computational capabilities. This was very difficult uh, until some years ago because utilizing different architectures means that you had to learn many different programming languages. For example, uh, in a computer that uh, consists of a, a GPU, you had to, <coughs> of an NVIDIA, you had to use CUDA, this uh, uh, SDK from NVIDIA. If you had uh, FPGAs, field programmable gate arrays, you had to use a language of uh, HDL, hardware description language, in order to specify the circuits and the interconnections. Uh, if you had uh, to use your multi-core infrastructure, you had to learn how to use OpenMP if it was a shared, uh, uh, shared memory system, or OpenMPI, uh, Open Message Passing Interface, if it was a distributed system. So there was uh, a zoo of um, computational programming languages. OpenCL, which is a standard, as I, I am going to show in the next slide, uh, it's a language that uses, that lets programmers use one language, the OpenCL language, to write a single program that can be executed in various different heterogeneous architectures. This is an industry standard. An industry standard that tries to merge the CPUs, which have many cores, uh, and until now it was, uh, they were programmed using OpenMP, and GPUs and the last couple of years also FPGAs and custom ASICs. ASIC is apl application specific integrated circuits. So OpenCL is a, a language, a new language that is open, royalty free, 
uh, and an enables the computer programmer to uh, utilize the parallel uh, architecture that he, that he has at his disposal. This is not only limited on the CPU and GPU, but it can also be extended to FPGA and other ASIC devices. So this standard tries to unify the programming of every HPC, high performance computing device. It's not locked to a specific vendor. For this reason, if someone uh, uh, would like to enter the HPC domain, I would advise him to learn this language, the OpenCL language. It also supports older hardware. It can uh, execute on even on your CPU. So uh, if you don't have a GPU card, you can program, develop, debug, and implement the accelerator on your CPU, on uh, your uh, system, and then you can just compile it for another accelerator like a GPU. This uh, also supports HLS. HLS is high-level synthesis on FPGA. So you can input OpenCL to uh, compilers of OpenCL, and specifically the uh, Intel uh, uh, OpenCL compiler, all the other vendor is Xilinx. Xilinx uh, SDA Excel is an another software. These two compilers accept as input OpenCL and create a bit stream in order for the uh, FPGA to be configured, to be reconfigured, and uh, creates custom circuits on this uh, FPGA, which of course uh, are accelerate uh, your program. In this scenario, you write OpenCL once and you just uh, compile it for different target architectures. On the other hand, we have, of course, CUDA. CUDA is more popular. Uh, CUDA is uh, uh, for NVIDIA cards only. So it, uh, um, it's, uh, it's developed proprietary only from NVIDIA. But NVIDIA also is part of the OpenCL committee. But the thing is that uh, OpenCL on NVIDIA lacks some features. So in, for uh, NVIDIA card, there, there are some uh, performance benefits if you use CUDA. But uh, I believe this will change in the foreseeable future. <coughs> How it all started with OpenCL? We had uh, various companies, AMD, ATI, NVIDIA, Intel, Apple. And they cooperated in order to create this standard, the OpenCL standard. They form a group. The group is called Kronos. Kronos is also comes from a Greek word, Kronos, which is time. This, uh, so uh, it's better use of time, to reduce time, to create accelerators. For this reason, they selected this, uh, this name, Kronos. And uh, they have formed a, uh, this consortium. And all these people have, uh, companies, have created the OpenCL standard. OpenCL is an important standard and uh, it is supported by a lot of uh, vendors. And uh, there are various implementations of the same standard. We can uh, find implementations from uh, Altera, which is now Intel, Intel bought Altera, AMD, Apple, ARM, and so on. All these vendors create compilers for their products. For example, you can download Intel uh, OpenCL compiler and create uh, uh, implementations for Intel Altera uh, ARIA 10 FPGA PCI Express cards, which are, are widely used as accelerators. Or you can uh, download from Xilinx their compiler to which targets their FPGA cards. So there are various compilers and uh, some of them are free, some of them uh, you have to uh, buy either the compiler or uh, you have to buy the hardware, which uh, the cost of the hardware, uh, I can tell you it's a bit expensive. For example, a uh, PCI Express 16 lane accelerator from Intel, the ARIA 10 FPGA, cost over 5,000 euros. OpenCL timeline, it, is, it was uh, uh, launched on June 2008 and uh, from some, uh, some ideas in six months they created the standard version 
there was a rapid in innovation, a lot of um, releases of the standard were made, and um, uh, after uh, releasing many OpenCL uh, standards, improving the OpenCL standard, usually every couple of years, we reach version 2, as I will discuss in the next uh, slide. Of course, the OpenCL uh, standard is committed to backwards compatibility, so if you created something with OpenCL, uh, let's say, some years ago, it can still be compiled using a, a new compiler. The current status, as of this month, June 2008, is OpenCL 2.2. OpenCL uh, is uh, uh, targets to programming languages C++ and C. So someone who is uh, competent uh, at C++ can use the C++ part of OpenCL, otherwise uh, people can use the C++. And also you can find Python OpenCL. So somebody can use also OpenCL in the Python environment. So this, uh, uh, this standard, the 2.2, uh, uh, it leverages features of the uh, C++ uh, 14. Uh, also a new intermediate language has been produced called SPIRV. SPIRV uh, is an intermediate language which means someone can compile and give uh, these um, uh, files, binary files perhaps, and uh, he does not have to release the source code. For example, some uh, commercial features could be given bi like binary in this intermediate language. OpenCL also take um, advantage of uh, the C++ language for safety, iterators, samples, pipes, and so on. And uh, it's also important that uh, we have better support for FPGA. Some new features that enables tools of uh, Intel and Xilinx to produce uh, better code on FPGAs. Of course, and here it's uh, optimization. And uh, the last part, which is very important, is that uh, full source for the conformance tense of OpenCL 2.2 was released. So someone who claims to have a good compiler for OpenCL, he should first try all these conformance tests to compile them and execute them. And if the compilation and execution succeeds, then he can uh, also uh, be part of the OpenCL consortium and he can carry the OpenCL logo on his software tools. Some OpenCL facts. Uh, they are supported on various operation systems like Android, FreeBSD, Linux, macOS and Windows. And of course the platform which is the architecture is uh, FPGAs. Uh, usually the FPGA boards are, are connected via PCI Express to the main computer and uh, usually these are supported because uh, in order to use an accelerator you have to transfer a large amount of data to the accelerator's memory and uh, PCI Express uh, is the standard way of achieving this high bandwidth. Otherwise, uh, other, other protocols like USB are too slow to handle this. GPU, x86, uh, Intel 32 and so on. Also, there is an international conference that is uh, uh, that OpenCL committee uh, organizes every year from the Kronos Group. It's the IWOCL.org, and uh, people that work or use OpenCL to accelerate their problems can uh, contribute uh, to this um, conference. OpenCL also supports embedded platforms. There is a special profile of OpenCL uh, in an OpenCL specification called OpenCL Embedded Pro Profile. Using this profile, someone can execute on his mobile platform a, a bit limited set, a bit relaxed set of features on precision requirements, and uh, it can leverage the capabilities of uh, uh, modern uh, uh, smartphones, <coughs> which consist of CPU and, GP and GPU. This is used in mobile phones. Some foundation of OpenCL. When we want to use an accelerator in a heterogeneous platform, we have to, to, to do a number of steps. 
first we have to discover the components that make us that make up the heterogeneous system so it's an inquiry to find out what GPUs the system has, what CPU, if any FPGA card is present, and so on. The second step is to probe the characteristics of these devices, like uh, what uh, precision uh, is uh, supported or what memory, and so on. The third step is to adapt to the specific features of different hardware elements. Then, manipulation of memory comes. You have to uh, allocate memory on the accelerator and you have to transfer data from your main memory to this uh, to this allocated memory on the accelerator of course there are some uh, features of uh, last standard of OpenCL that enables the uh, sharing of the same common memory in uh, on chip CPU and GPU there are some on uh, CPU and GPU from Intel on the same chip that uh, uh, when uh, OpenCL is executed you can ask for a feature called pint memory pint memory means not relocatable memory from the operating system it's a locked memory the pages are locked and uh, are not uh, exchanged with each other in the virtual memory subsystem of the operating system and this enables the same pointer, the same address of the pointer, to be used either by CPU or GPU, which, uh, of course, uh, helps towards acceleration because you don't need to transfer large amount of money, uh, of memory. Execute the kernel, and then collect the final results. These are the steps that have to be performed every time we have a, a, and to use an accelerator. The kernels can be run on the CPU and GPU at the same time. Uh, in the past, uh, we executed uh, the, must, the main code uh, like uh, uh, to prepare the memory and so on on the CPU and then the CPU blocked waiting for an acceler accelerator which was only a GPU to perform the computation and after some time the results returned and the CPU resumed the execution. Of course, as it's easy to understand, this is not performance efficient. Uh, having a processing element to wait for something to, to complete, it's inefficient usage of resources. For this reason, we can use OpenCL to simultaneously use also CPU and GPU processing elements. And uh, every processing element has a, a queue and you issue uh, tasks to be executed on the queue of every device. OpenCL, as we, perhaps you have understood that now, is not only for GPU. Uh, it's more than GPU. It enables, us, it enables the designer to use the GPU, which is called GPGPU, General uh, Programming on GPU. Uh, so you can use the GPU not for displaying graphics, but uh, to utilize their processing capabilities for scientific uh, computations and um, you can use them um, as an accelerator most of them are connected via PCI Express and uh, CPU can act as a scheduler or in case that it can also uh, it is a, a, a multi-core CPU can also perform uh, computations on the same OpenCL code that it's, it is executed on the GPU and uh, there is a trend to integrate also uh, the FPGA with the same chip as the CPU. Intel has uh, announced a new Xeon chip that has also the uh, hardcore part, the main Xeon, uh, Xeon fabric, and also FPGA, the configurable part. Of course, so some years ago, Xilinx had proposed uh, architectures like this called Zinc. The Zinc Xilinx architecture is an architecture consisting of dual core ARM chips and FPGA fabric. But uh, Intel is uh, uh, moving up uh, uh, the requirements because now it uses the very efficient and uh, high performance uh, Xeon chips which are much better than uh, dual core ARM. 
So in a, a, how to use the CPU and GPU in the same OpenCL execution context. As I said before, we have for every device a separate queue, which means that we have to allocate tasks in this in, in the in the two or more queues that we have on our system. Uh, object that allocated on the codex level uh, are uh, have to, as I said, been allocated on the memory. And uh, when we have CPU and GPU on the same die, we can share the memory. This can be done using the parameter CL mem use host pointer flag to have the same pointer. And uh, uh, we can share and allocate task with different granularity. I will discuss the granularity in the following slides, which is means the level of parallelization. And we have a system consisting of CPU and some accelerators. We have to make the partition, partition of what we have to execute, what we have to compute in various queues. We have multiple devices, multiple queues. How we can partition the work to be done on all these devices? We can make a static, statically allocation, statically assigned work. We can say that for this particular problem, GPU can perform for example, 10 times faster than CPU, so it will get 10 times more data, 10 times more job to be executed on the GPU than on CPU. This is very easy to do, uh, but of course, it's not the best performance efficient way. And this can only be done on problems that have a fixed amount of computation to be done, and you can calculate, for example, the required flops, the floating point operation per second, and uh, divide accordingly this uh, work. A better strategy is a dynamic allocation. Dynamic allocation means that as the computation progresses, decisions from a scheduler are made <coughs> as to what job will be calculated uh, every time by what device. So this incorporates a scheduler. When we have uh, dynamic schedule, dynamic allocation, we can adapt better our heterogeneous architecture to the computation, uh, computational requirements of the work. We have <coughs> the following approaches to do this. First is coarse grain data decomposition. This means that uh, we divide into large arrays of uh, our data. For example, if we have video frames, uh, we can create uh, large arrays of data and send for computation and synchronize every couple of frames, for example. This is the course means big. So we have uh, big uh, allotments of work for every, every device. Another, uh, another approach is the fine grain, which we have very small pieces of data to be processed. And um, uh, someone creates jobs to be executed, it inserts this to a common queue and a, and a scheduler pick up from this queue and sends them to the appropriate devices queue. This is a fine grain decomposition which means that we need to make uh, many more decisions than coarse grain and uh, the scheduler in this scenario will need a lot of uh, computational time but if our problem is very irregular, we can benefit from this approach. And for the final dynamic uh, scheduling approach is uh, a task level when we have multiple tasks that are executed, uh, like a, a pipeline uh, implementation, we can create tasks and put also to this queue and uh, a scheduler pick up the appropriate task and sends this to a device. Concerning now another uh, another issue uh, for OpenCL is when we have the, a system on chip on the same die, on the same silicon die, we have CPU and GPU. And this means that uh, if we execute long kernels on CPU or GPU, then uh, we may have a shift in frequency because um, if a, a chip uh, overheats itself during the course of time, it may, may reduce the frequency. Usually, uh, if you, for example, you have uh, a single thread, this can achieve a turbo frequency called by tail, 
which is much higher than the nominal frequency, but uh, after uh, uh, some time it may overheat the CPU and will reduce the frequency. So this means that uh, perhaps uh, uh, we have to take into account that uh, the frequency of the system clock can change during the execution and you have to reschedule again the tasks. So in case uh, we want to implement uh, simultaneously usage of uh, multiple devices using on the OpenCL, there is some examples from Intel in which uh, this, in this example they have uh, made a tone mapping for post-processing using CPU and GPU on the same chip. So somebody can download their code and uh, the, the four basic things that this code does is that uh, it creates a shared context, a shared view, and implements the previous uh, intra-frame approach. The intra-frame approach is uh, the approach of coarse grain decomposition. So it implements a coarse grain decomposition for dynamic schedule, uh, writes the data to a shared resource, and update, updates input data. So somebody can download the full code from the Intel uh, and uh, he can adapt this to his own needs to, so he doesn't need to recreate for example a dynamic schedule this is a very nice example that someone can make use of and another uh, example from Intel uh, it's uh, a simulation called end body it's, uh, uh, in this simulation they are performing a lot balancing simulation uh, across uh, uh, CPU using uh, OpenCL. So uh, I'm just mentioning this because there are already codes that can be utilized by software engineers and uh, of course as uh, computer scientists or engineers we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. If we can reuse parts of the code and adapt this to our problem it's much better and uh, we can progress faster. The results of this shows that um, for example uh, in the first figure we see platform vs CPU only and platform vs GPU only uh, and uh, it, it, there are three systems down there, three architectures and uh, we can see f that um, if the platform is both CPU and GPU so um, in every, let's say in this system which is a very um, it's a, the i7 3770K processor, uh, we can see that uh, we can achieve uh, much higher grains, gains if we utilize both uh, systems. Also, here it's a bit more analytical for various uh, uh, programs, Landmark, uh, Santa Crypto, and so on. And CPU contribution is uh, in GPU. Uh, the GPU is not very strong in this system because it's integrated on the same chip with uh, CPU. It's not like we are using, let's say, an NVIDIA 1080, which is very, very strong. It's the normal on-chip <coughs> GPU graphics card. And you can see for this reason that uh, on, this, uh, on, in, on, on most of the systems, on most of the experiments, except uh, uh, this, CPU plays an important part and GPU Play, uh, plays uh, and contributes contributes towards a better efficiency and performance efficiency of the system but uh, uh, it's uh, not uh, it's not at the same level usually with CPU we have to from this figure to understand that GPU no matter how fast it is if it is on the same chip with CPU can be used to accelerate the design so uh, with OpenCL, no matter what processing elements we have, we can uh, even uh, gain some milliseconds for just using uh, this uh, accelerator. So uh, we have to use this. With OpenCL, we can utilize them. As I said before, OpenCL is not used only on the GPU. Uh, it is uh, used also on other heterogeneous uh, applications which consist of uh, uh, devices which have different 
uh, completely different uh, architectures. And dynamic scheduling in such approaches is uh, the recommended approach. For example, if you have an FPGA accelerator and a CPU, it's a bit difficult to judge how best, how, how be if, if it's better to use something on the FPGA or, or the CPU and, and to compare these devices, the performance of these two devices. Because FPGA is something custom and uh, the compiler of the OpenCL to FPGA will make a configuration which sometimes may be very good for our problem and achieve very good acceleration, but in other problems it won't be so good. Um, because compilers are still uh, an open research field, especially when we are referring to make from uh, a software uh, from a high level definition of OpenCL to create a bit stream on the hardware level to to make all the inter interconnections and uh, to create the circuits on the FPGA. So for this reason, if you use a lot of heterogeneity, you have to use dynamic scheduling. Some things about the OpenCL model in order to have a grasp uh, idea. So we have uh, the host computer uh, and the host computer has a number of um, devices. A device can be a CPU, GPU, FPGA, DSP, ASIC and so on. And uh, in every device uh, we have compute units. For example, a GPU may have uh, 16 stream processors, for example. So this means that we can have uh, uh, these compute units, this number of compute units. And each compute unit is pro has uh, processing elements and uh, accelerators have their own memory uh, in case there are external cards like uh, GPU, external GPU, external FPGA and so on. Let's see uh, example, an example here. Uh, we have, if, we have, if we have a CPU, which is an one open CL device, no matter how many cores it has, it is one device. This device has uh, computing units or control units per core and we can assume that we have one processing element per, uh, per computing unit. Uh, so we have one device and multiple processing elements. GPUs, concerning the GPUs, also GPU is a separatable OpenCL device and can use uh, the, as I said before, we can use CPU and all GPU devices concurrently through OpenCL with the same code. Concerning the GPU, it may have different number of processing elements and all depends on the model of the card. The big idea behind OpenCL is to replace loops with a function, which is called a kernel, executed at its, at its point in a problem domain. For example, here we have a function that performs, as we can see, a multiplication. We have an array, C, which is the result of a multiplication between two other arrays. And this, as we can see, it's a for loop, which is executed for n times. I start from zero until n. The idea is to take this part of the code and create this, which is the open CL in this context, as you can see, of course we have added some words like, like kernel, which means that this should be executed on the device, on the accelerator. Also, we have prepended the variables like this with global. Global means where this variable will be stored, global memory. And then we have eliminated the for loop, but we have uh, altered this with the ID of the execution thread because uh, in the OpenCL we have many threads, many execution flows and each one has a separate ID and this ID helps us to discriminate between the IDs and to uh, modify what every thread should do. Here, uh, let's say in this context we are assuming that n threads will execute this, so here we had a for loop from 0 to n. So we have n threads. n threads are rendering this part of the code executed and every thread knows its ID 
thread 0, thread 1, thread 2 and so on. And every thread executes just one part, one thing, this, this multiplication. So the thread n, for example, c uh, with index n, will just be a simple multiplication of a of index, uh, with index n times b with index n. So every thread will execute just one operation. <coughs> but uh, n threads will enter concurrently this part of the code and for this reason we will achieve a, a much better result than uh, using the previous example. So we have uh, a, a n-dimensional uh, uh, workspace. We have to divide our problem into n dimensions. And um, we have global dimensions and local dimensions, but we have to consider that, uh, that our problem has to have dimensionality dimensionality either in 1D, a single line, the previous problem that I said before, n threads is 1D dimension, 2D, for example, 2D is uh, an image. Uh, or 3D, 3D could be, for example, a video sequence consisting of many frames. And uh, if uh, we can express our problem with dimensions, then we can Port, we can create OpenCL problem, we can an OpenCL algorithm for this problem. So uh, we have to uh, uh, create the problem to formulate dimensions for our problem. And uh, we can specify up to three dimensions. Uh, and of course, we, we just can use one or two dimensions. We specify the dimensions and then using the appropriate functions called, every ID has every thread has the ID of uh, for every dimension uh, and according to this uh, uh, vector of dimensions he can uh, execute the kernel. So we are calling uh, the dimensional range uh, and uh, we group uh, this whole grid into work groups and uh, work groups uh, is the uh, unit that is scheduled for execution. In the OpenCL, we have this memory model. We have a private memory, to each, which is memory per work item, uh, which means one thread cannot uh, access a private memory of another thread. We have local memory, which means in the same work group, threads can uh, share and exchange uh, data. Global memory, in this hierarchy, the higher the memory, the most uh, the, the, the higher the amount of memory is, but uh, it's lower to access. So if s something accesses uh, all, all the time global memory, it will be, because it's, it's an external memory, it will be very slow. So we prefer to use private memory or local memory. And of course, host memory is on the CPU. You, uh, in the OpenCL model, we have to explicitly uh, perform memory management. We have uh, to allocate memory on the accelerator and transfer data uh, from the host to the global memory of the device and then from the global memory to the local memory of the work groups and, and uh, in reverse in order to get the, the results back. We have uh, the context and command queues. Every device has uh, a queue that uh, tasks are being scheduled in this queue. Uh, I said before about the a kernel about the labels that we put in front of the variable to define where they are located, about uh, uh, functions like say get global ID uh, which uh, gives the unique ID of every thread in order to know what uh, work he should do. This is a, a, again an one dimensional space and one dimensional grid because we have one dimension and uh, this replaced something that was a uh, one for loop. It, uh, it was not uh, a nested uh, for loop. Uh, we compile programs and uh, uh, this means that the same OpenCL program can be used either for execution on CPU, GPU and other cards. And there are some uh, optimization issues. Every time we access memory, we have to make uh, sure that we using the proper way to access memory because uh, uh, 
as we know, there is cache memory that uh, caches uh, uh, memory addresses that are near to each other. So if uh, we access memory in a, in a way that uh, will create many uh, cache misses, this will be bad for performance. We can, of course, uh, use uh, metrics and profilers. For example, Intel has uh, uh, performance counters that enables uh, the CPU to count the memory accesses, the, the cache misses, cache hits, and so on. And the, the programmer can read these numbers and understand whether his program uh, is using the memory access in an unorthodox way, causing a performance loss. And uh, we have to uh, have at least four work items. We have the big grid, we, we divide the grid into work items. And uh, something that is very important in the accelerators is that we don't want divergence. Divergence happens when we have if-else branches. And this means that if we have an if and an else branch, some threads will have to go from the if branch, some threads will go from the else branch, but this means that the accelerator has to execute both branches. First, the, the if branch, and the threads that will not execute something will be an idle mode. And then the else branch, and of course the threads that won't uh, have to execute uh, something will be idle. So this will double the execution. For this reason, we have to make the work items on the same group follow one way. If we make the work group uh, and all the threads follow the if part, and there will be no need to execute the else part. So divergence is something that we have to take care. Other optimization tips is that we have to use profilers. Of course, in every software development, we do use profilers. No matter what we are uh, programming uh, from C to uh, Java, we have to profile our application to see where uh, there are the hot points of the execution, where we should invest time in order to, uh, to optimize this. So here also is very important because uh, in HPC, we have to make the best use of our hardware, of our resources. Use a profiler and uh, we have to consider the memory bandwidth. In most of the problems where we transfer large, large amount of data, uh, the GPU card, for example, cannot reach its it maximum performance in floating point operation per second because uh, it cannot get enough fast the data from the host memory, from the CPU. So usually, uh, card, the GPU accelerator, is underutilized. And this is a metric. We know from uh, the data sheet, the floating point operation per second for this device. And uh, we, in our application, our kernel, we can count the number uh, of uh, operations that has to be performed. And w uh, the subtraction can, source, can uh, give us uh, a hint that we have reached um, a memory, the memory bottleneck and uh, we have to try to perhaps reuse parts of the data that are on the global memory than to transfer again and again from the host. Of course, this is not always the time. The, always, uh, there, are, there are occasions that we cannot reuse data and then we are forced to have a limited GPU capability. And uh, uh, we have to check the, that uh, the memory is, is better, uh, uh, we transfer the data with the best appro appropriate way. We have also another metric, is the portable performance. Portable performance means that I have, have created something in OpenCL and has very good performance, either it's executed on CPU, GPU or FPGA, because some researchers try to optimize for one specific platform. They, for example, they have a specific GPU and uh, they always try to uh, make the best of their GPU uh, by defining pro proper uh, sizes of uh, work groups and so on. But this is bad because if you try then to 
port it to compile it for another architecture, then you will have some issues. So uh, try to be generic to uh, to to uh, check your implementation on various architectures. First of all, you can check it on CPU. Uh, so first uh, compile it to see if on CPU you have a very good performance, like on uh, GPU. So uh, always try your code on different platforms to see what happens. Some other uh, performance portability issues you can perform a micro uh, benchmark in order if you like to do for example a scheduling either static or dynamic scheduling uh, to issue for example a thousand uh, points to be computed on CPU and GPU and measure uh, what is the difference in the computation speed in order to better partition your job. Otherwise uh, if you, if you cannot do micro benchmark, uh, you will end up uh, either in very complicated dynamic schedulers or a static schedule will not gain uh, the maximum that you could gain. Uh, it's more important to keep the fastest device busy uh, because if a, a, a device, a GPU that is perhaps 100 times faster than CPU waits for a one second, it's much, it's much worse than the CPU to wait for one second. So first of all, you have to take care that your fast devices uh, operate at full speed. Uh, other issues like uh, uh, you have uh, uh, from OpenCL 1.1, you can discover the preferred work group size for the devices. The devices report back some parameters and using these parameters you can better adjust uh, your workload and as I told you before there are various compilers one important compiler uh, for me uh, which uh, I am on the HPC all and embedded system is the Intel FPGA SDK uh, using this compiler you can support as I wrote uh, right here the Intel GPU Intel Xeon processors and uh, multiple FPG boards so a uh, board that is connected via PCI Express to your system uh, can accept as input the bit stream that will be created from this um, OpenCL compiler. Otherwise, if you would like to implement an FPGA accelerator on your system without this toolkit, without this SDK, you, you have to write your own HDL hardware description language, which means describing your circuit in a very low uh, in the, a very low uh, language format uh, which means we have to specify the connections of the ports and so on you have to implement the PCI Express bus specifications and so on which is very tedious process using this compiler you input OpenCL you get FPGA configuration so this is a, a nice tool for someone uh, and uh, not only Dell, but Xilinx using SDA Excel can offer this. And uh, especially um, Xilinx uh, offers this free of charge to various universities via the university donation program, which I use this every year to get the licenses of the, from the Xilinx part. Well, acceleration can be also be done on the cloud, as I told you before, having the expensive GPUs of FPGAs and especially FPGAs is something that not everyone can afford. An FPGA card consisting of uh, 5,000 euros and also requires a very, a very expensive uh, PC of uh, uh, over 1,000 euros. It's not something that perhaps some researchers cannot afford. For this reason, they can use the cloud. There are two, two companies, Amazon with the DEF1 platform and Nimbix and they offer machines that have FPGA cards uh, plugged in and ready for use so you can rent time on these machines and uh, there are all the tools pre-installed the compilers if you use DEF1 it's the Xilinx uh, for Xilinx uh, FPGAs 
and uh, you, you have all the tools uh, there, you compile there, you execute on the same board and you have accelerated results on uh, your application. And also Nimbix, uh, which supports also Xilinx with HDXL, but also Intel ARIA 10 FPGAs using the Intel compiler. So, somebody can use these machines on the cloud, can rent time from the cloud, but uh, we should know that uh, uh, cloud uh, is uh, sometimes can be very expensive for example usually it's 10 to 20 dollars per hour on these machines so if you want something from many hours perhaps it's better to invest uh, in hardware but if you want something you have your open shell code running on GPU rent for a couple of hours to these machines on FPGA to, to take results from FPGA it's something that uh, you can do if you have already your open shell code and not developing there, just to execute and see the results. Some uh, research, and I will lend the presentation from indicative uh, research paper that I searched from Google Scholar, LTP Explorer, ACMD Library, and um, uh, HGPU.org from uh, 2008, to just to give you a codex where OpenCL is used. For example, it is used in deep learning, arti artificial intelligence, and in image recognition. These researchers, which uh, I have the affiliation here, um, in the Journal of Reconfiguring Computing, they used Xilinx uh, SDA Excel to create FPGA bitstream. They created the OpenCL algorithm, and then they used uh, this uh, tool, the Xilinx SDA Excel, uh, and they found out that uh, they uh, improved the CNN uh, network uh, the uh, neutral network, neural network, uh, uh, 14 times on Intel uh, Xeon CPU, and F compared to the CPU, the FPGA was 14 times better performance. But uh, of course, if you see it on the full picture of the system, it was two times accelerated, which is uh, uh, an interesting result. They achieve acceleration uh, on uh, FPGA, but the specific part was improved 14 times. Another research board on astronomy, uh, in this paper, they accelerate on the FPGA the convolution for pulsar search. It's uh, uh, gathering a lot of signals. And uh, as I wrote here, uh, eight, 85 field filters, they have to process a large amount of data. For one pulsar search, is, uh, as you can see, 26,500 teraflops and uh, they used this card which costs 8,000 euros Terasic DE5 net PCI Express 18 lanes uh, and using this they managed uh, to, de to uh, accelerate uh, their design uh, and uh, uh, as they said with uh, three cards we can do it uh, almost in uh, uh, in real time. This, of course, it's a large investment to use this. But the, we have to uh, to note here they used OpenCL, they used FPGA, they accelerate the problem. Another research uh, is on compilers. Uh, in this research, they propose how to make a better uh, OpenCL compiler using various features of modern compilers like vector swizzling and so on. Th this is. Uh, of course, something interesting for the compiler people. Uh, another uh, research work is how to benchmark OpenCL architectures, how to, uh, s to, to have some metrics uh, about this. They propose a new benchmark suite uh, in order, uh, like SPEC. You know SPEC, it's uh, a common evaluation toolkit that you can execute on your uh, computer and have some metrics concerning various parameters of your system. These authors propose a, a tool of uh, algorithms that can be executed on, uh, using on OpenCL to have some co common metrics. So you can co compare one FPGA card with another, which is faster. Because all these problems, as you can see, uh, are, are very dependent on the nature of the problem. So uh, in, one in one problem, the FPGA can be very good alternative with uh, an accelerator. In other problems, the GPU can be uh, a better alternative. So using a number of benchmarks, this is not only one algorithm, it's almost 20 algorithms, 
you can have a general idea on uh, how it performs. Other uh, research works on the HPC domain uh, using OpenCL uh, in FPGA develop multiple algorithms and mapped to this uh, board. In this, uh, the, the, the interesting part is that they perform a design space exploration. For example, in the compiler, you can define if uh, you would like a loop unrolling. Loop unrolling is if, you, for example, you have a for loop for 10 times, you can copy the same code 10 times and avoid completing the for loop. This is uh, loop unrolling. Perhaps this is not on power. Maybe I'm not, uh, not so many of those lights. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Yeah, it's uh, time. Uh, another issue: quantum computers. They prof uh, they perform. Uh, they show the simulator simulator using OpenCL on quantum computers. Uh, they perform this on cloud. For this reason, I said to you, you can compile. You have your own OpenCL on your CPU, and when you are ready, push it on the cloud if you don't have the equipment and get the results in order to be published. Uh, other molecular dynamics on chemistry, also OpenCL, and uh, they target uh, the zinc ultrascale uh, FPGA. Uh, other, uh, other authors, uh, uh, comp they try to suggest new improvements to the standard in order to enable FPGA as a true device. Now FPGA is considered a custom device it does not support, is not supported 100% by the uh, standard because it's considered a custom device and not a true device. So, uh, the, because the authors and the Kronos group say that connecting software to silicon is the motto of the Kronos group. So, we have to enable devices that is close to silicon to be better supported. And FPGA is this the de facto standard which is close to silicon. is all circuits, gates, multiplexers and their connection. So they propose how to do this. Uh, other improving performance on OpenCL, how to make profiling help you to achieve your goals. And um, the data compression, they say how they used OpenCL to make a better compression uh, algorithm. Of course, OpenCL in GPU here, and they have some interesting results. Uh, in robotics, they use object detection. Again, open cell code that uh, a neural network and uh, compiled and uh, uh, executed on this. Other, uh, again, on compilers, we have a kernel compiler and runtime run for RAM 16 core processor because uh, this uh, open cell consists of compiler and runtime. So you have uh, to have both things to be for a uh, for uh, to have a support for one device, and this th the author proposed this. Uh, three more papers: biomedical, uh, they using on GPU, using OpenCL, and uh, achieve 40% uh, speed up. Uh, breast lesion segmentation software for MRI, biomedical. Uh, in cryptography, and especially on steganography. Uh, again, algorithm implement OpenCL and uh, achieve uh, great portability and because they test it in various pra platforms, Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, and Mali-GPU. Uh, deep learning, CPU and FPGA simultaneously use ads using OpenCL, so they had a dynamic uh, schedule here, three times higher efficiency and 380 times higher energy efficiency than serial. And the last uh, uh, indicative search uh, is on computational um, scientists. They, they used FPGA accelerators to, uh, which out, outperformed the 16-thread CPU uh, for uh, this uh, uh, implementation. It's differential uh, in its approximate solutions for system of partial differential equ equations. So they accelerated uh, the solutions, the numerical solutions. So, conclusions. OpenCL has widespread, uh, widespread industrial support, supported by various vendors, various commands, various compilers. Uh, it's a runtime and a compiler. Does not only target uh, GPU, but also FPGA, DSP, and various other devices. Has the potential to deliver portable performance. Uh, there are uh, hooks that you can use either for, with C, C++, and Python, 
OpenCL. And the future is clear. Uh, it's the only pro parallel programming standard that enables this uh, heterogeneous architecture to be unified in a common perspective in order to make uh, all this high performance computing. Uh, I use the resources from the uh, use OpenCL specification, programming guide, heterogeneous computing with uh, OpenCL, and presentation from uh, other authors. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, first of all, you, you have to have a problem that takes a lot of time to be computed somewhere. If a problem is just uh, a couple of seconds, don't bother at all. Yes. Okay, so you have a problem with uh, requirements for high performance. Uh, you should check whether the computation is focused on, on some lines of the code or it is, is distributed to the whole thing. If it's, let's say, a function that consumes uh, over, uh, let's say, 50% of your CPU time, then you have a good candidate to try to use OpenCL because if uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, functions that uh, uh, exchange data and there are a lot of dependencies, it will be very difficult to parallelize. So, first of all, we find the function. Then, on the function, you see if there are a lot of if then elses. If there are many if then elses, uh, then it will not be good for uh, parallelizing at all, not uh, with OpenCL, with whatever. Uh, so, in this case, you have to find, perhaps, to see if there is another algorithm that is uh, better suited for parallel implementation. What, what I uh, tell to my students, you have a problem. Try to see if there is another algorithm that is parallelized and does the same uh, thing. So, it's better to replace this, because the se there are algorithms that do the same job. One with a sequential way cannot be parallelized, but the parallel can be parallelized. So, try this. Uh, if you find a function that uh, has uh, the potential to be parallelized, then uh, consider your effort on this uh, function. And uh, of course, uh, it's not it's uh, something that you gain with experience. So uh, we'll try to do some things, execute it. If you see a performance advantage, then you are heading towards the correct uh, direction. But of course, you have to. Uh, also have the knowledge of patterns of parallel programming. So if you see a part of code and say, I know this, this can be parallelized like that algorithm, you can implement these patterns. So it's something that you can gain with experience. So the parallelization is always manual? Yes, the parallelization is always And for this reason, uh, we used to say the free lunch for software programming is over. In the past, you had the one program that was take advantage of the increase in frequency of the CPU, you didn't do anything, and uh, every year your software executed faster. But now this <coughs> is, uh, the period is over, you, the programmer has to write and uh, write many more lines of code in order to uh, show to the CPU all these different flows of execution. It's very laboriously uh, labor job, and uh, no matter what uh, uh, programming language, like uh, 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 OpenCL or CUDA or anything, you have to spend a lot of time paralyzing this. And uh, uh, it seems to to be a shortage on universities, on students how to know how to do these things. Because in most of the cases, in my university also, my course is considered because it's parallel and distributed system, is considered one of the most difficult uh, ones because people used to think sequentially. When they are doing things, I have first to do this, then, then, and they don't think parallel. And this uh, needs another way of thinking, to, to think in parallel when you see a same listing, to see multiple flows running on the same listing and not just one line by line. I think that... Uh, uh, I have a question regarding the performance. 
(um) I think performance is (um) a lot related to the (um) scheduler and in the mark~ (um) in the research there are a lot of scheduler in the (um) (um) (uh) founded or introduced so (um) for dynamic and (um) static and other types of (uh) scheduler it also (um) very dependent on the task in the pool so (um) what is the best one ya so there's no no best one (ppl) there is no best one it's (err) for your specific problem you have to fi~ first try to keep it as simple as possible (err) so perhaps your problem does not is a scheduler it's very regular you have very big data but you can always (err) (um) cut (err) into many blocks and so perhaps you don't need a scheduler or a static scheduler may be enough for you but if your problem is irregular then you need a scheduler and of course as you said there is no perfect solution (err) you have to try to experiment not only with the scheduler but with the parameters of the same scheduler itself so for this reason it's very labor all these things to parallelize and uh, needs a lot of experimentation a lot of profiling a lot of measuring all the results and mm. i found that sometimes dynamic scheduling um, may be much slower performance than yeah because it yeah. decides uh, yeah. always uh, executes code for this reason dynamic scheduling in all is only for irregular problems not if it's regular try static or no scheduler at all perhaps I have a question, maybe a, a somewhat extension for four more questions. And uh, as far as I may understood that um, uh, OpenCL is one kind of a, a combination of language and uh, maybe compiler from the C, C++ to the lower uh, lower structural yes, yes. Uh, languages. Then, uh, is there any uh, kind of like uh, like task manager in Hadoop that could be uh, is there any any managers or uh, or, the, or the dynamic stack scheduler in these uh, devices? In, in this, you know, and I, I feel I mean the in running on the house, which is completely included in the uh, OpenCL. I mean, is is OpenCL only a compiler or a combination of compiler and the scheduler? Also? Uh, well, it's a compiler and a, a runtime. Uh, oh. So you. Compile, you create uh, the, this intermediate representation that allocates, uh, you take the allocated task to every queue. You say this this uh, work will be on Q1. Q1 is GPU. This work will go to Q2, Q2 which is CPU. Uh, so it doesn't have any other scheduler. And when this task completes, it is a classic uh, uh, FIFO. So the first that comes to the queue of the device, this is start to executing. Then in the next go to the queue, and when the first on the top uh, executing, the next uh, event, the next work goes in, and so on. So there is no scheduler uh, to support, for example, preemptive or other things. You have to implement your own thing. Right? You have to have another queue, and from this queue to decide what you will put every time on the device queue if you want to have a scheduler. It's not done automatically by the OpenCL. It's not a. Uh scheduler or manager provided by the no no it's, it's, it's not, not provided by right? so. yes OpenCL support um, some kind of dynamic or uh, reconfiguration <coughs> of the devices for example on GPUs I would um, assume that you would have to exchange some compute shaders to run different kernels is it supported to um, switch these on runtime or especially the bit streams for FPGAs or do you have to have one fixed bitstream which supports these five kernels? No, it, uh, it's not yet supported the uh, reconfiguration and for a PGA this is a problem because reconfiguration does take time it's not uh, a couple of seconds but you cannot take uh, sense of uh, this uh, dynamic reconfiguration so it's an open issue it, is, it has not been resolved yet So your problem has to, all your kernels have to fit on the PGA at one time to use it? Uh, yes yeah, but these FPGAs are very large, and of course you don't implement the all all the problems. It's just a kernel. Yes. So the kernel, uh, in most of the cases, it's few lines of code. You know there is uh, the rule uh, 1090. 
10% of the lines of code execute the 9% of your algorithm. So this 10% usually fits uh, on your accelerator. Yes? Uh, so just in addition to the question, uh, are those Accounts all uh, compiled separately, or do, can they share resources in this uh, Xilinx uh, HLS backend? And what do you mean? All the FPGA kernels? Yeah, so you compile the OpenCL, you have an FPGA kernel. Yeah, so for, for example, yeah. I have an, an OpenCL program, it has uh, 10 colors, and uh, every kernel it does almost like approximately the same. They all do multiplication, and, but they all do it a little bit different. And uh, does the OpenCL compiler compile 10? separate columns that are then loaded onto the FPGA, or do they... They are loaded on the FPGA, 10 yeah. kernels, yeah. Uh, all in one, okay. and, uh, and they don't share resources, because sharing resources uh, is difficult. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they don't share resources, 10 completely different kernels on your, uh, okay. on your card. But they can com communicate on our code, they communicate using yeah, the yeah, global yeah. memory and yeah. so on, yes, okay, okay. via memory. No more questions? I can only go for a box. Yeah. So, it's just, um, two, I, I think it was slice 19 or something. It's, it's off. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you said uh, that um, static load balancing, optimal static load balancing is a simple problem. But I remember I had uh, something uh, like the partition problem, which was uh, in the original list of uh, LP complete problems. Yes. So you have to tell why it is simple. Yeah. Static optimal load balancing. You mean the static uh, scheduling is better? What are you No, saying? you said it's uh, in, in brackets, you said it is simple. Static scheduling is very simple, yes. But is it related to the partition problem, which is a key for people? Okay, uh, <laughs> the, the, the simple it's just means that it, it's, uh, yeah, if you manage it to have a rough estimate how many, how fast there is one device around it. You can just uh, make one decision. Okay. The whole problem is divided 1% of this, 10% of this, 15% of other. You divide all the uh, data from the devices, and you are never again deal with decision. So it's, uh, it's so simple once you have a rough estimate. Of course, it can be complete because it's very difficult, but a rough estimation helps you do it very simply. Now, of course, the time. <laughs> I don't see any more questions. Thank you so much for this interesting talk. Yeah. And I thought that working in this area also helped in acceleration of the uh, presentation um, the performance. <laughs> 62 <laughs> slides in one hour. In one hour, <laughs> it was a good performance. Yeah, I try to be always on time. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. It was disconnected. Ah. Just this. Ah, this. Now you can, yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay>. yeah. <laughs> the simplest reason you can, <laughs> you, you can imagine. Die Methode müssen wir uns merken, die nach einer Stunde gedacht wird. Ja. Ja, aber die kommen mit eigenen, glaube ich, das ist schwierig. Ich glaube, sie haben keine. Ah, <laughs> 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 <
Δηλαδή όσο περνάει το stream, δηλαδή έχουμε ένα stream και κάτι ξεχνάμε και κάτι παίρνουμε. Αλλά είχα, επειδή σπουδασα στην Πάτρα, και όταν ήμουν στη Σβήγη... Σε ποιον καθηγητή? Α, είχα κάνει βήμα. Εγώ το εγώ τι είχα στην Πάτρα. Εσούς... Πολύ παλιά. Πάρα πολύ βήγη, εντάξει. Μα δεν το πω. Δεν το ξέρω. Όχι, βασικά... Άμα ξέρετε το... Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ, όλα καλά, ήταν πολύ Well, I'm going to check it. Because I have a full week ticket, uh, 100 euros for uh, the full week. Ah, okay, you like um, it? Yeah, one thing, um, I, I don't know if I, maybe I listed it, is um, when you optimize, you may um, an optimized by uh, hiding the latency of the DRAM. Yeah, by a pipeline transfer, so on. I do some other stuff. I can do some, uh, but I skip yeah. this. I was skipping yeah. the flight to be one hour exactly for 60 seconds. <laughs> but um, thank you for your coming here. I, I, I want to see the Novero to so this is a very nice opportunity to combine also uh, the lectures and the yeah. Cebit. So it was... Uh, yeah, okay, perhaps uh, yeah, we can come again in a uh, couple of one, two years. And you uh, just slide from the, the presentation here and uh, the last presentation? I will send you the letter. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, by Sunday she will have them. Uh, we make some slides to adjust me what I have. Yeah. So, uh, we will uh, talk with uh, about the loop line model and so on. Yes. I will check the paper and... Uh, and uh, I'm hoping perhaps uh, if I come my next uh, year to have, man have some um, better give a publication for a conference, let's say. Because I, I would like to have a co cooperation research not only with Greek people but with uh, yeah. other people. Yeah. So I'll work on this and I will uh, let you know. Okay, take care. Αλλά τώρα πια δεν είναι στο πανεπιστήμιο της Ζήτης, δεν το ξέρετε. Εγώ αυτό σήξερα. Ήταν μαζί με το Ζήτης, αν το ξέρετε, τον Πέτρος Κουμούτσακος που κάνουν όλα αυτά τα κομπίτες στον Ανσάινς. Στη Ζήτης δεν το... Απλά είναι έτσι κάνουμε τα ίδια πράγματα. Βασικά, δηλαδή ας πούμε εμείς σε μια φάση κάναμε, είχαμε ένα MCMC, αν ξέρετε, και σε αυτό θέλαμε να κάνουμε ένα Newton Update. Ναι, και το κάναμε εδώ το Newton Update, είχε φτιάξει ο Πάνος μια library που έκανε αυτά που λέτε εσείς, δηλαδή εγώ του δίνα τον κώδικα και αυτός ας πούμε έπαιρνε το server, το πίτα γιατί έχει πάνω και το έκανε παραλληλάζ. Εγώ απλά έγραφα το... του λέγανε το... Τη library, δεν θυμάμαι ακριβώς, κάποιος άλλο. Ναι, ναι, και εγώ έγραφα σε το... και ήταν πολύ απλό ας πούμε και τελικά... Ωραία, ωραία. Πώς πέντε αυτό το πανεπιστήμιο, σε σχέση με την Πάτρα. Κοιτάξτε, επειδή εγώ... Καλά, με την Πάτρα είναι... 
Εντάξει, α πούμε τώρα εμεί αυτό που κάνουμε είναι άμα δείτε πιο πολύ στο data analysis για web site. Οπότε δεν σε νοιάζει τόσο πολύ να πάρει ένα web να το κάνει. Από δημοσίευση πώ θα πα. Εντάξει, δεν έχω κάνει πάρα πολλέ. Ένα μισό χρόνο δεν έχει. Πώ θα πα. Πώ θα πα. Έχω μόνο μία. Δεν έχω. Και είναι και πολύ απλή. Θέλω να πω σε απλό κόμφερα. Εντάξει. Σε ένα χρόνο κανεί δεν έχει βγάλει ακόμα τίποτα από την διακουρή. Πολύ ναι, μετά από 1,5 χρόνια που σκεφτάζει κάτι. Είναι, νομίζω ότι το βασικό, ξέρετε, επειδή εγώ το μάστα μου το είχα κάνει σε βιοπληροφορική. Mm. Βάζει κάτι, τάξτε, είχα, είχα πάει να κάνω κάτι σε θεωρητικά. Mm. Αλλά δεν... Πολύ θεωρητικό ήταν και το άφησα. Το άφησα. Λέω πιο διαφορά να κάνεις. Εγώ την βιοπληροφορική θεωρώ, εντάξει, κάπως. Όχι, μην το λέτε αυτό. Είμαι πιο hardcore βασικά, είναι πιο κοντά στο metal. Δηλαδή φτιάχνω από λοκές, είναι τέτοια... Κοιτάξτε, να σας πω κάτι. Μπορείς να δεις πανεφορμάτιξη που είναι wow και μπορείς να δεις πανεφορμάτιξη... Εγώ γι' αυτό έφυγα από τη ζήχη. Γιατί είχε πολλοί κόσμο που έλεγε ότι κάνω πανεφορμάτιξη και ήταν βιολόγος. Δηλαδή έπαιρνε τα data, έπαιρνε τα δικαιώματα. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Αλλά υπάρχει και πανεφορμάτιξη που είναι ωραία πανεφορμάτιξη. Του αποδεικνύει, του κάνει. Αλλά δεν έχω νομίζω ακόμα τέτοιου γι' αυτό και. Α, όχι, όχι. Αν πάτε στην Οξφόρδη, αν πάτε σε κάποιο άλλο, θα δείτε. Σου αποδεικνύει γιατί αυτό το τίμημα μα ευγενεί καλύτερο. Και επίση κάνουμε. Μπορείτε να είναι λίγοι Ε, ναι, και όλοι αυτοί. Αλλά μπορείτε, αλλά και εγώ θα ήθελα πιο μετά να κάνουμε clinical bioinformatics. Δηλαδή σε ένα university hospital να κάνουμε data analysis. Καλά, πάω στο Σέμπι τώρα, πολύ Α, όχι, όχι, ναι. Μιλάω πολύ, εντάξει. Όχι, καλή συνέχεια. Να είστε καλά, να είστε καλά. Και εντάξει, άμα θέλεις... να σε βοήθησε να καταλάβεις κάποια πράγματα για την Ναι, ναι, εντάξει, εντάξει, είχα κάνει όπως σας είπα, στην ίδια μου κάνει ο Παραλέλ και είχαμε κάνει και στην Πάτρα. Εντάξει, ενδιαφέρον ήταν. Να είστε καλά, καλώς αγαπητοί. Και άμα θέλετε κάτι, θέλω να σας δώσω το... Βασικά, κοιτάξτε, άμα θες να βρεις να σας γίνει στο ίντερνετ, μπορώ να σου την παρουσία του. Άρα, καλέ, άμα θέλετε να σας στείλω ένα μέλλον, μας θέλετε να σας στείλω. Εγώ, κοίτα μου. 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 Εγώ, And uh, uh, I hope that uh, everything went according to your schedule. I, yeah, yeah. There was no problem at all. No, no. And, and I was happy to be there. Uh, yeah, I was curious. A lot of people yeah. came. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I thought it was very strong. He is stronger than some of the other faculty. Oh, okay. This is his laboratory. Oh, and there he has. Some giant number of, of projects, and uh, so mm. maybe he can also better motivate his, his students okay. <laughs> than me. I am almost a yeah, if you like it, do it. <laughs> so, this was students of him? Yeah. Ah. Everybody, <laughs> only, only Marcus was mine, and then it was uh, Yeo. <laughs> so, he motivated you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. He was motivated. I was not able to motivate. Something happened to me when I um, get off uh, from the car. I cannot walk. Do you want me to tell you? No, no, no. Something happened to me. Ah, don't you walk? Perhaps if you sit a lot of uh, hours. Uh, Something uh, happens when I when I get off from the car. That this is a result. Of Perhaps you what you. Yeah, so you kick, and then I notice I can so you walk. have to relax. I hope that. Uh, Until Monday. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 if you want me to do something. Yeah, no. thank you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now I'm leaving, but uh, I would like also to uh, to say again that I would like uh, perhaps uh, to come for a lecture to, mm -hmm. to to meet also Luta Malamati in Kazan or uh, otherwise. One from the college can uh, mm -hmm. call you. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I can uh, uh, help assist in this to mm -hmm. perform all the Euro, Erasmus thing on there. Mm -hmm. So you know it's open. Yeah, now it is so a little bit practice in this Erasmus stuff. Yeah. Um, I told you already that I haven't met Malamati in person yet. Mm -hmm. 
I know her three years, I, or I work with her three years together, but I have never met her. And, uh, no confidence she might be at all. A young, young person, isn't it? Yeah, it's she me. Uh -huh. young. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I hope that she will come to Bordeaux this year, and I will uh, meet her. Okay, I will see her on uh, Monday on the uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. So she would mind her that it would be nice if she would come to Bordeaux. Okay, so I will. But it is, it is now seriously, it is a money problem. Yeah. Mm. These conferences are so expensive, and traveling is expensive, and this organization, this SCS, where we both work for. <laughs> In my opinion, it, it, it's not fair what, what they do. Yeah, we are organizers. Yeah. We put our work in it, and they expect from us that we take conferences. Eight hundred dollars. Oh, could you okay. could you imagine? Is it fair? Yeah. Because these are your connections. Don't pay. Or pay just a uh, very small amount. This yeah. is very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I am in the good situation and if there is one three or four years I could I could pay it. And if I could not, I didn't pay. It. But I didn't feel it. Yeah. You know, I come and uh, so everybody knows I have not pay and I am staying, I must be there because I must uh, have under control. Yeah.